My name is Andrew Michael Hopgood. Uh, it's the 7th of August 2019. I'm just journalising my ongoing um, interaction with the Department of Work and Pensions, which started when they switched the um, the being on disability benefits and putting people onto a work group and handing over the uh, care of the vulnerable to private bodies and I was dealt completely underhandedly and uh, uh, unlawfully and uh, complained from the beginning through the pro proper avenues and they've just been ignored, completely been ignored and written over as though they've never done anything wrong. So I've, all my complaints, all my written complaints, all my verbal complaints have been personal interactions with the, the actual people at the job centre. Um, my initial uh, complaint through the complaints procedure at the job centre putting it through their mailing system, all gone on unnoticed, all ignored and it's all been lip serviced. I had two department work and pensions assessors visit my house. I've also had um, threats from the job centre coming round the door saying that I must get down there otherwise I'll stop my money. Um, and I've just on it I've never been in compliant from the beginning. It's just because they broke the law and lied. I've not been able to comply with their um, their wishes and their ploughing over of, of what they've done wrong and their unwillingness to admit it. And the compromise of the staff that uh, the uh, authorities of the administration put these people under. So they just do what they're told. So their counsel just to ignore whatever I say, I, I don't know the details, but I, I'm just on the end of it. So I'm documenting a ongoing assessment of the the uh, incapacity benefit switching over to the uh, employment, whatever it is, uh, which was all underhanded and done by private bodies with no, no medical qualifications whatsoever. Uh, and it was... Um, disgusting. Um, I was um, notified. I've got. I've got all the evidence. I was notified by mail that I would be having an interview with an assessor, and I, I never received the date for the interview. But what I did receive was a decision made on my behalf without me being there to say that I was fit for work. Now I'd been signed off by a doctor and given a Med Four certificate. It, which had to go through um, several professionals to um, clarify that you know I needed I needed that at the time, and uh, so that decision was made not by the doctor but by other people and my own my own needs, but they. Um, Doctors were pinched, so they weren't spending the time. I was not getting the proper help, uh, but I did get signed off work, which was a need. But I didn't get a proper diagnosis. I got. Uh, it was just a, a challenge to get any anyone to know what they were talking about. And since discovering this is uh, all what I'm looking at the broader picture of the medical profession and the political uh, circle and all the context of uh, the way these things work, the way people are uh, treated and managed and um, I realised that, uh, that my diagnosis was not on the table although the evidence and the knowledge was there and I suffer with um, trauma based disassociation and that was done in my childhood and that's been ignored that's been there's no avenue to diagnose somebody with that there may be today uh, but there was never in my day it was all, all ignored although 
the medical profession have always known this for, for a very long time but the public body and the practicing people in the NHS do not do not have this uh, knowledge to equip them to make proper diagnosis so they are limited so it's all an orchestrated uh, concealment of the truth about traumatized disassociation what that does to a human being and how you can manipulate that person isolate that person and without the support that person is uh, lawfully uh, useless because they're on their own they can be targeted, singled out, and that, that could be a group of disassociated, that could be a whole family of disassociated people. They will not be able to stand up for themselves in a real time without advocacy and support. The adv advocacy and support that they provide is their advocacy and support, and it never meets their need. It's a preconditioned need that they want to meet their needs and not, not the patient's. So I was struck off. Um, I should have had an interview, but I was notified that I didn't, that um, they'd made a decision on my behalf against my doctor. I wasn't told if my doctor was um, uh, consulted. So I was struck off, put onto this, oh, you're fit for work. And then I complained. But I, I only got the notification of that decision on the last day of the, a day before the window before I had any opportunity to complain so I couldn't have complained but what I did do was I went to the job centre where they'd um, pass me over, pass the jurisdiction over to my um, assessment and uh, benefits and I, and I went to uh, an assessment, told them my circumstances, I said I won't be complying with their get back to work schemes and I told them my circumstances that uh, I was unable to get back to work at that time. Plus I was suffering from a car injury that, who'd, that had not been diagnosed and had also been covered up and that my doctors had also covered up. They'd also covered up the poor treatment of my mother and uh, the concealment of any care in the hospital and the aftercare and they're all party to covering up um, their mistakes and because I'm disassociated, because I was on my own, my father's disassociated so I had no lawful witnesses to go through the procedure so they walked, they, they tried to walk all over me at every possible avenue. They were brazen in not doing what they should have been doing and they knew that these vulnerable people are, in the eyes of the law, unfit witnesses because they're made unfit. And so the, they can either be taken advantage of by slack and people that are compromised, that are pressured into ploughing on. And so this is um, ripe through every sin single um, civil service uh, procedure. And I'm not saying that's the majority, but it, I'm saying the minority go under the radar and they know it and they do it daily. Um, this is documenting the uh, first they ignored my initial complaint. Um, I've had, it all ties into, to me, they're all the same people, the, the doctors, the department of the NHS and the department of work and pensions, they're the same authority, they may be different independent bodies but they, they are working for the government who are supposed to be civil servants, they're supposed to be serving the civil public body. I've not broken the law, it's just that if I, if I go along with their wishes and toe the line I am concealing the crime. I am saying oh that's alright for you to lie and not go through procedure, I'll just uh, be a good boy and I'll go through the procedure but what I'm actually doing is I am allowing them to commit a crime and get away with it by not saying anything. Uh, so this is why I'm documenting this and just showing to my, um, as, a, as a witness, showing my life circumstances uh, as best as I can. There's this uh, charade, this um, absolute blatant, disgusting uh, lip service continues. Uh, so I, I've documented previously um, a string of um, interactions with the Department of Work and Pensions, the NHS, my local doctors, and this is just um, 
because I have a disassociated mind it's very difficult to recall things so as best as I can I'm documenting uh, the ongoing just ignoring uh, the last video I made I, I replied let them know uh, they denied me assessment now that what I believe is they're trying to cover their back so they offered me a, they, they demanded that I had an assessment I said I'd be happy to have an assessment if I had my own lawful advocate not their advocate but somebody who would be on my side and my lawful rights and um, I said I wouldn't be able to go to the advocate and I didn't want to be assessed by anybody anyway so because it was traumatizing and on top of all this I do not want to be assessed by a stranger but just to prove that I am telling the truth if they if they don't believe I'm telling the truth they should have stopped my money and I said you can stop my money I don't want you in my life I'd rather not have your money and be dependent on uh, a private body uh, just walking all over and dismissing what my needs are um, so I didn't go to their assessment I explained my reasons and documented it and they that was ignored I had no response from that then following that they write as though nothing has happened because it either goes to another department this is a uh, Belfast this is current so the first um, since hearing from that the first um, con the, f the following contact from the Department of Work and Pensions after this ongoing ignoring everything I write everything I fill in is just followed up as though they never got it there's no acknowledgement to what my needs are what my what my circumstances are so whether I ex keep explaining it to different people every time it, it's ignored every time and they just toe the line and expect me to toe the line so I ignore them and then it gets passed to another department and on, on it goes so I am um, after from all all those times being ignored and uh, the system rolls on without acknowledging my own complaint they just carry on going as though the sun shines out of their portholes um, so I got this on the 29th of May and this, I didn't know what the intentions were but it seems like a change of tract oh you may be able to get more ESA and so they were uh, sent me this and saying that I might be able to get more benefit which I'm, I'm totally not interested in you know if they can't work my benefit out properly to start with then they can't listen to your real complaint how are they gonna, how are they going to assess what what money I need and what what money I don't need they don't even consider my own life circumstances so it's all all completely lip service and the people who are, are just pen pushers and they're just ticking boxes and performing to reach targets and they will plough over you regardless and if they have a problem it goes higher up and the person higher up says ignore it gives them counsel and then they carry on ploughing on with their letters and so your complaint, your complaint doesn't get heard you have, what you need is a solicitor and the threat of the law but that's not something I've, I can afford or, or have access to and that's not something I I need somebody to help me uh, assess these people because uh, I'm vulnerable and I'm traumatised so you know I need two heads are better than one and I'm a person that needs two heads even though um, you know I'm not stupid but I'm also vulnerable and at times when you've got a disability there's certain things you cannot do that, mean, that doesn't mean you're not aware that you can't do them and what is required and if you can't meet that need and there's no one there to support you, you're going to get walked over. And when people can see, oh, they can get away with covering up their own tracks at your expense, they will do it. Um, it's just human nature. So I got that to invite me to fill in the questionnaire. This big um, employment and support allowance. We need to look at, again at your previous claim of employment and support allowance well why do they they didn't explain why they need they've completely ignored that I what you know I shouldn't have been on this employment and support allowance and and not like they cared anyway they're just acting as, as though they care and uh, 
even if even if I was ready for work, they've sh they've access they've blocked every avenue for me to accept their help anyway because they're totally untrustworthy people. Uh, then they're, they're not helpful. They're liars, and that's not sort sort of people I want to be associated with to um, help me put my life on track. Are they going to help me get a, a lawyer and make a police complaint? Are they going to assist me in doing all that to help me do that first before I can get my life on track to? And then to turn around and say to a, to an employer, well, I'm sorry, I'm injured. I can't I can't offer you any employment because it would be dishonest because I'm unable to work. I'm unable to do my own do things in my own house in my own life. And these people just aggravate. They're just not interested in all this lawful trite. It's on my wick. These liars. And then they got their official badge and everything. The crown. It's disgusting. These people are really taking the biscuit. So I ignored that because it, it's traumatising because I've been ignored from the beginning. So how can I comply to to a load of liars and criminals who pass it on to the public uh, civil service body who I don't trust either. I, I, I question who are these people? Are these people planted because of their... Uh, because of who they are so they're quite willing to do this behave like this or, or, or just they psychologically profile certain people to um, take up these job roles uh, will, who are psychologically follow what their supervisor tells them without question They all seem they they all they all claim to be nice and helpful and blah 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 blah. But when it comes to the truth, they they've got deaf ears. So they didn't hear from me. That was on the 29th of May. Then on the 14th of June, they followed up. We have not heard from you. What 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 I need to do? So they, there's no acknowledgement of my previous complaint and the breaking of the law and my original complaint and and their so-called investigation which is they never tell you what their intentions are you're just treated like a blank sheet and you're given what what they want you to do so this is the uh, the system so again I ignored it so I'm just going to record I got that because it's too aggravating it just really opens all the anxiety and the trauma especially when I was you know fighting to get my mum out of hospital at the time and, and they knew that they're, you know and they they're just liars and they hide behind this uh, lawful authority to uh, say oh you the law requires you to do this the law requires you to do that well first the law requires you to be honest and, and law abiding before you can go around with the law so th this is a uh, this is th the recent one 5th of august ESA willful admission of any of my continuous correspondence with department of work and pensions still no lawful or honest approach to me so they basically ignored everything, all the, so whether I complain or not, it's irrelevant because they're just, it, I won't get any knowledge of the letter or the phone call. All I will get is a, new, an, a letter the next time and you might forget, oh, perhaps it's sorted now and then you get a letter the next time to no acknowledgement of what happens before and a completely new tract. So, um, if they would have given me the proper assessment to start with, and it would have been lawful, they, they would have made a right decision. But the intention at the beginning was they didn't want to make the right decision. So they got a load of criminals to pass a load of vulnerable people over to this ESA, this Employment and Support Allowance Scheme, which is a, a complete half-baked idea to, I, I, I really don't know what it is, but it, it certainly doesn't show, it shows a lot of contempt for people's real needs. You know, I don't think the public demand this. I think they believe that they chase their own shadow, thinking, oh, you know, we've, we've got to be seen to getting people back to work. But the truth is about people with disabilities, you, you cannot cheat the system. It's, for, it's a very small margin because you need so much medical and professional reputation to to support you to 
to give you a certificate to say you know they're not going to put their heads on the block and they're under so much pressure anyway and that's what I found I couldn't get a proper diagnosis all the lies all the missed medical information and the false diagnosis and the pharmaceutical racket and you've got your doctor's got a steer if they want to help you they got to steer through that and they got pressure from the government pressure from the department of work and pensions and the, and when the doctors back off and and you're left these people are just all over you because they, they they're not they don't care and it's a lie and it's all backed up with lip service and political you know wishful thinking and bs um so i got this 4th of August, they sent it the 2nd, we have not heard from you again, blah blah blah, and uh, they won't be hearing from me, because I, 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 they've already heard from me and they ignore it, and then I just circled this, and it's so then, um, when they get to listen, equality and diversity, we are committed to treating people fairly, no you're not, regardless of their disability, no you are not ethnicity doesn't matter gender irrelevant sexual orientation transgender status you see they're all politically correct well what does it matter when they're lying this is all oh we're 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 to here to please everybody uh to, to to put on a false face to show that we are doing what we should be doing marital or civil partnership status age religion or beliefs please contact us if you have any concerns well i have contacted you you ignore my concerns and you keep plowing and taking the self-righteous upper hand that you uh, can't do anything wrong and you've got the law behind you so this is another documentation for my personal record of this ongoing lies from the department of work and pensions uh, with this stupid employment and support allowance you know and, it, and and if it helps people well that's wonderful but i i cannot be lied to not only on the back of that i i had to fight for a long time and i've worked all you know i'm not i'm not a scrounger i've always worked and worked for myself and when i had difficulty i come up against all this um the shadow of the government where it's all lip service they don't really care about people's health whether you're born ill you're deprived and, uh, and you know you're disabled in some way it's all to political frame it and cut money and uh, package you into a, a scheme where that, that some some idiots fought up on the table that would be a good idea let's try and implement that and then they've switched the old the old system which was abused which again was the same people the same methods of um putting you through the grill to see if you were w w you would break or they would um, make poor decisions on a a questionnaire unqualified people trying to examine what a, a medical doctor has um determined you've got no there's no opportunity for your to be supported by the people who've helped you to in your life with a disability and then the, the government with the department of work and pensions will try and undermine that and then that's when the people who supporting you back off because they don't want to get drawn into it and that's when they're able to pick off people and they're able to see who's um who who will comply and who won't and it's all done in the secret um, interview department in a in a concealed locked in locked in building where you have an interview of an assessor. It's not a medical assessment. They're not medi medically qualified. They just sit you down in a quiet room and it's intimidating. They are, they get you to fill out a questionnaire and probe you. They're not interested in you. They they don't listen to any personal concerns or anxiety or or anything. They're just there to do a job and you what you really need is a lawful advocate with you to to protect you because you're vulnerable because they will just um write uh, walk all over you and write you off and then they will sign that off with an lawful official 
um, backing and that's what the government hide behind that's why Theresa May employed ATOS took the contract off a ATOS to process these people ATOS are a, a French IT company they're not, they're not medically qualified it's just they need somebody to do their dirty work so they, they get a private body to do it under the guise of the NHS so uh, that's just the ongoing ignoring a poor decision um, they don't provide the help on the NHS they don't provide the proper avenues of support that you need they don't diagnose properly there's um, a kaleidoscope of various diagnoses for the same thing uh, the, the medical profession are deceived and unless you've got the money unless you can afford a private um, professional who's, who's thorough and, and you can afford the time you're not going to get a proper diagnosis you're lucky to get a, a medical diagnosis for from the doctors because you can only share one thing at a time so if you're like me and you've got a, um, hundreds of things that have never been dealt with and they're piling up you go and you've got 10 minutes with your doctor uh, what hope have you got for getting a proper diagnosis your health is just going to no matter how well you try and look after yourself you know you're tired with a brush before you get into the doctors you're a nuisance or you have to toe the line they're under pressure so they, they put all the weight on the public body and people who are really ill and suffering other than all, all those people who choke up the surgery with their you know talking and whining and complaining and and the doctor you know gives them the time but any any people who are conscientious about wasting doctors time and they're, and they're concise and they get ignored you think well what's causing all this you know what where's all the how come people get people in before you get like an hour and then and they're, they're that sort of like regular patients and you're and you and, and you're like uh, moaned about if you mention more than one ailment uh, the doc uh, you know this is completely orchestrated in my opinion for, through regulation and craft and uh, and uh, I believe in my my own life circumstances the case of my trauma based conditioning all plays into this model of the compromise of the NHS and Department of Work and Pension it just goes to show that the people behind it are evil they're liars and then they just um, abuse the people that they employ and they get them to lie on their behalf and they they can't question it because it it's not in their minds to think that they, the people they are working for are able to do that but that's exactly what is going on these people do not care about life they do not care about your soul and they do not uh, they do not listen to your complaint because they've already made their mind up and anyone who's been on the end of this treatment knows exactly what I'm talking about you're just a piece of me and you're processed so I'm going to close there this journal and until the next time just a quick addition and PS to my uh, journal of documenting the systematic ongoing ignorance and denial from the uh, civil service the department of work and pensions I wanted to just give some uh, some recommendations for anybody seeking research because uh, in my own case um, and the consistent abuse but using the law and covering up and writing up false documentation and false witness and uh, the cover up of abuse in the name of the law whether that's doctors, police, nurses, ambulance whether that's a whole lot of them whether they've been um, having experience where the whole groups led into a compromise by this uh, evil direction and when they when they dis, when they follow suit and realise that they've uh, compromised themselves and they're guilty, this is where hospitals and uh, could be the guard, army, could be the police. It's happened in the past in when they've been uh, 
uh, responsible for the loss of life and they all protect themselves so they all close ranks and keep their mouth shut so when when you're uh, a vulnerable adult or, and you're disassociated that can be easily taken advantage of and that can be steered and for the group to be led into the to, to, to do the slaughtering um, so in the context of uh, trauma based mind control I just want to give some uh, some recommendations for further research this is a, a book about Alan Dulles Alan Dulles he was the director of the CIA um, and one of the brains behind or, or one of the key components behind the modern trauma based mind control tested on tested on um, prisoners of war uh, vulnerable people in a psychiatric hospital whether that's foreign or domestic this is the uh, the root of the um, bringing forth of the prosecuted Nazi scientists who are practicing this and joining it up with the British forces and the American forces along with the ex-Nazi scientists and starting a mind conditioning program called MK Ultra uh, Project Operation Paperclip or Project Art Artichoke and then the development and unfolding of that and then there was uh, the case uh, in Canada of uh, Dr Cameron on the testing on the psychiatric patients so it's a broad mentality of the heart and root of this practice and all the components behind it and how how it how it can be recognized today and how uh, people are uh, conditioned to be traumatized whether that's in whether in their birth whether in their in their mother's wombs whether by the machinations of uh, the effects on lots of incremental uh, lies like um, stuff, uh, food additives, stuff in medication, stuff in cosmetics, all have a, an effect on the organical development. So that's a recommendation to anybody who's seeking answers. David Talbot, The Devil's Chessboard. And I just wanted to uh, share that, that this knowledge, not only in this time, you know, this pre, this is like a um, an organization of the um, practice of uh, Mancure and Candidate of uh, trauma based conditioning. So you trauma someone, make them completely shatter their lives, make them dependent on um, people to look after them. Uh, so you shatter them in secret, and then the people you look after them is a set up mechanism around around that person's life so it take it, it becomes the parent or the uh, administer of the need for that shattered individual and it can be quite um, crude how families can be manufactured to to psychologically be disaffected so they can provide the remedy to the areas where the, that disaffection is being created that can be done in that's been tested individually on, on, on families but that's also been um, rolled out on a broader scale so this is some of the things um, that opened my eyes and made me consider my own circumstances in life and considering all my uh, false medical reports having a, you know serious having internal injuries from a car accident and being refused care from hospital, from medical practitioners um, diagnosing me before they've even done any uh, external internal examination it's just their word against mine so I can see the pattern throughout my life where things brazenly happen that shouldn't do and the the effect that has on the person because it, it it's traumatizing so you're conditioned to to trigger in in, in the environment where they can um uh, basically do what they want and then the time you uh, come out of your disassociated state it, it it passes like a flood and you're 
you're, you're like an, an old man with uh, Alzheimer's and you, it, it passes, it, it, it goes away and then you, you, you can't remember whether it happened or not so you're very vulnerable so you need um, advocacy which has been denied so I wanted just to highlight that this knowledge and um, the, the general effects, the medical effects that trauma will cause on a person whether that's a, a, tra um, a serious trauma or whether that's head, head trauma, a physical injury or experiencing a trauma has the same impact on the um, executive brain which is it's to do with the frontal lobes so uh, someone with a serious head injury could um, have exactly similar symptoms to somebody who's uh, exp experienced horrific trauma and horrific traumatic experience they would both have that uh, disassociation so it can be an organic disassociation or trauma based uh, disassociation like somebody's ripped the wires out of a car so the engine don't start um, you can liken that to trauma a trauma experience or a physical head injury it could be like um, the engine braking so you've got uh, those different methods and sometimes people can experience both so they can have a trauma um, disassociation from head injury as well as a traumatic experience or both. So that's a good avenue for research, the uh, history of the CIA and that gives a good background on the mentality of these people and the, uh, the, the, the reality of the powers that, that were and that still are and how this is uh, carries on today. And just to highlight that this knowledge has always been known, the disassociated mind. Um, I'm going to make, there's a book called The Executive Brain by Elk, Helkhonon Goldberg, E-L-K-H-O-N-E-N, -E Goldberg. He's a, he was a Jewish um, neuropsychologist, I believe, or neurologist, um, studying brain injuries in communist Russia. Or well, he, his, um, the person who trained him, uh, practiced in in Russia in communist Russia and taught him all, all the effects of uh, trauma head injury whether that's um, phys physical head injury or a traumatic experience and he he revealed all this in to the medical profession which were in denial, they had the knowledge, this is where it's two-faced, because they have the knowledge, if you research and look through history, you'll see that they have the, psychiat uh, the psychiatrist um, body and the medical body behind psychiatry have the knowledge, but it's own, it, you're, you don't see that in the public, it's kept from you, but the knowledge is there, so if you go to look for it, it's there, if you go to look, if you go through what's available, you'll never hear of it. So this um, Dr. Elkanon Goldberg, who is a Jew, a Jewish man, and he exposed by his work and studies and papers, he overturned all the medical profession because they were teaching that autism, Asperger's, and all this was all, all, all to do with this and they that the world was teaching falsely that they didn't know what the frontal lobe and the executive brain done which was to conceal the truth of all this practice that it was going on because if you if you do the research you see the reality of the practice where it was practiced and if you, you just consider the film one flew over the cuckoo's nest how that shows that they had the knowledge of of if you give somebody a frontal lobotomy what they will be com completely vegetated but they will still they will still be in there but the light it's like switching the lights off breaking that breaking through the window and switching the lights off and uh, it shows that they have the knowledge about the trauma based injury and the court and the effects it has on the brain but they can see conceal it from the general public and give another reason for all these uh mental illnesses 
so it's to conceal and that's what I realized and that's what um, I come up against in the medical profession they will not give you the diagnosis that you you need and they're dismissive of anything to do with your past or in my experience I'll oh, forget that it's all that was all yesterday or they, they spill out a um, a diagnosis before you've even given them any input. I've had some really con concerning uh, diagnosis from both psychologists and psychiatrists and gleaned a little here and there of, of any of any truth whatsoever and uh, had to you know had to go back to my doctor and say look that, that was a waste of time well I got something from that so and it's all it's all shut down it's all closed down and concealed and my findings and my deliberations are it's deliberate because they, they know about all these things um, and if there's another book I'd recommend um, it's called Outfits, Outfits a doctor a doctor's eyewitness and it's by another Jewish gentleman Miklos Nice nicely um, M-I-K-L-O-S-N-Y-I-S-Z-L-I he was a Jewish physician in, in the time of the uh, Second World War his whole family were taken to Auschwitz his, I think his his family were killed and because he was a doctor the, um, Joseph Mengele was, I think it was Joseph Mengele was working at Auschwitz and and grabbed him to um, help and insist him in his experimentation on on Jewish children. It's a sickening book. It's very it's very hard to read because he's given you per personal experiences of what he saw his own country people be you know gassed, burnt to death, and just disposed of and cruelly treated. And he had to take part. He had he was. Um, you know his life was threatened and his family's life was dangled on the string to he couldn't say no so it's he gives his account and that's um a outfits a doctor's eyewitness and i think that's by penguin books published his uh memoirs and he's an old he was an old retired gentleman when he i think he wrote the book so that's a, a read to see the mentality and how how alan dulles and the cia um, harvested all this knowledge from the Nazis and, and they continue to practice it to this day and lie to the public so this uh, trauma based disassociation this cultivated disassociation is a reality I'm not saying it with everybody but uh, generally the human race is becoming more and more disassociated just by genetic inheritance and uh, the way the sin of the world the way the world keeps going on and it it breeds um if you come from you've got a disassociated background you're going to have uh, you know it's going to be passed on in the genes and that child's going to be more prone to uh, suffer from a disassociated mind and that will be misdiagnosed and um you'll be led around the garden path and put on the on the uh, gravy chain and the uh, conveyor belt of the marketing of the the devil and the uh, pharmaceutical industry so i just wanted to include that within my um within my journal those books Porn, pawns in the game william guy carl is another a broader account of the the conspiratorial powers behind the world's the shadow powers behind the uh, compromise of uh, the the uh, acting powers in in government and law. So there's there's those uh, few books and and a few thoughts to consider to research about uh, trauma based conditioning. And in my opinion, this is this goes back um, in in Great Britain. Um, I think it was. I personally believe it was practiced before, and it. it um, the knowledge has been sort of like full circle but the practice was happening before in the British in the military uh, intelligence because this this is an ancient knowledge so I don't believe that um, in the 60s uh, the 50s and 60s 40s 50s and 60s that the, the CIA were the main um, authors of uh, 
mind control because it can be traced it, it, throughout history and the Egyptians, is, um, all, 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 the, all, all through antiquity you can, you can hear of this practice and this knowledge and uh, you know the devil the devil, the devil can teach the same thing today as he could yesterday and uh, work through people who are prepared to follow that that sort of um, those sort of ideas and uh, um, influence so that I'm going to close there and uh, just invite anyone if they if they're not if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ to just repent believe the gospel um, as the Lord Jesus Christ said whoever should call upon me will be saved and if you're um, a trauma based uh, disassociated mind um, you need that extra help and we all we're all born sinful and everyone need everyone's a part of that sin everyone's guilty of sin and uh, God died to save sinners so that's my invitation to just believe repent and believe the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ said you must be born again you must you must be born of the spirit and uh, as well as the flesh and, and if you don't know the Lord you're dead in the flesh you're dead in sin and you're lost no matter whether you think you're a good kind person there's many good kind people that uh, reject the Lord Jesus Christ and they will perish uh, perish in their sin and their good works with them so I'm going to close there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen